Hmm, what can I record a video of today? I've already covered most of those. I already covered that one. That one. Yep, done that one. I haven't read that one yet. Hmm. I've recorded those. Uh, this isn't really an anime manga channel. Hmm. Already recorded that. Already recorded that. Wait a second. I've got it. Good evening, friends. So I'm back. Uh, I finished my first year of community college, at least, and things have been crazy. Um, that's why I kind of like took a break and you know didn't really uh, upload for a while. You know, like college, the things that have been going on, um, and yeah, there was just just a lot going on. Didn't really have time or motivation. I was kind of like stressed and procrastinating. But that's not important. What is important is comic books. Um, so what have I been doing in my nerd room, if you will? Um, well, I've been like watching a lot more anime, and um, I'm currently trying to read V for Vendetta. It's a slow process because again, like I just get sidetracked a lot. But yeah, I'm currently reading that, and uh, I've got a whole other like thing I might go and re re read Watchmen and get through that again um because again it was a good read and I recently bought a Rorschach mask pretty neat um but yeah I've uh written a paper on comics gate I was probably going to present it to my fellow fans but I don't know where the channel will go after that because again uh my videos aren't very good I mean, if we're going to be honest, they recorded on my phone. There's no real editing on them. Uh, the production quality is, like, you know, cheap. Um, I don't like video editing at all, and I don't feel like hiring an editor because, you know. Um, so I'd, maybe if I did, I'd have to, like, learn editing, which, again, doesn't sound fun. I might have to do that just so I don't have to hire an editor. Uh, I may hire an editor. I don't know. Because, I don't know. Uh, but I would need, like, a better camera, editing skills money things um but yeah so on to the video i was at my grandma's a while ago and we were watching we were flipping through the channels and she's like hey kiddo you like spider-man that's the amazing spider-man 2 have you seen that one yeah i have i have a grandma well do you, you want to watch it sure Let's turn on the Amazing Spider-Man 2. And then we watched it. Ten minutes in. These superhero movies are just, you know, they're just gimmicks for the for the special effects. There's no story in them. And that, of course, got me thinking. You know, she doesn't really have, like, a knowledge. Uh, not to be, like, condescending or anything. But she doesn't really have, like, a knowledge of, like, superheroes or like a and she doesn't have an interest in them you know it's not like it's bad or anything it's just you know who she is that's her opinion that's her like how her hobbies work you know we're all different but she doesn't really have like an interest in that sort of thing and that kind of got me thinking you know to beg the question you know why do people judge superheroes and things when they don't have like an understanding of them per se. Like, and again with movies it's really weird because the average person isn't going to read a comic book. And I've heard, I've read multiple sources that say like, from like comic shop owners, that say like, oh movies are great for business, they really bring in a crowd. And then some people are like, no movies don't really do anything to help us. So, I mean, it is kind of conflicting. Brand those are like two different sources and everything. So it's like, I guess it depends on where you live, probably. Um, and again, like, I don't really like live near a comic shop. Um, I think there's one like 30 minutes away. I don't really go to it because it's like, you know, 
I don't like driving and stuff. That's anyway. But uh, I do mostly like uh, if I do, I go on Free Comic Book Day, which has been canceled. Fun fact. Um, and I go to Amazon basically, but I go like on Free Comic Book Day, and maybe if I'm lucky, I go to like a convention and I pick up a big assortment. But yeah, usually like just if I'm like on vacation or something. I have been, uh, more often I go to Walmart and I pick up the like packs of comics. They have like, I've done like an unboxing of them. But anyway, um, the average person isn't going to like read a comic book. Because again, like, like with most book adaptations and things, like it's easier to watch the movie or like listen to the audio book than it is to like actually read. As the great Harvey P. Carr once said, people don't read even when they have pictures. So, you know, like, again, reading does take time and things, like, people are lazy. Again, I've gotten in that situation before. Even as a kid, I hated reading. Um, I do like the idea of writing, per se, you know, like, using details to describe things and, like, using your experiences to tell a story that's kind of cool but again reading it's like uh, you know I didn't really even start reading comics until I was like 12 and I started reading uh I, w I was watching comic pop and I read Ultimate Spider-Man then I kind of snowballed from there but now I would say you know I'm an avid comic book reader and things but yeah most people don't read comics so we have to like tailor the movies with a with like uh, fandom in mind we have to use what we love about the characters to portray that on the big screen and I would say you know to some degree people have been good at that um you could argue about the Sam Raimi, Sam Raimi movies but I would say that they are pretty good you know some people think that like it's outdated and things but I mean like you know he tried Sam Raimi had like a he used his own movie style and his love for Spider-Man to make a Spider-Man movie which is what you know the job called for and he had a true admiration for the characters maybe not like Mary Jane or something like that but I mean he liked Peter Parker at least you can tell he put effort into the main characters um but then there are things like with the general public you get like Man of Steel and the Amazing Spider-Man series because again, like, with the Man of Steel, like, at least from my perspective, they didn't have a respect for the comics. They just kind of, like, Superman's outdated. And granted, like, people do think that way. We'll get more into that later. But, I mean, yeah, they didn't have a respect for the material, so they changed it up. They got rid of the underwear, which, again, is another, like, thing that just drives me crazy. It's not an underwear. There are trunks, um... Nerd Sync did a great video on that. But yeah, their trunks from like the 40s, it shows strength and masculinity at the time. And I mean, it never really changed per se, but like, that's what was cool at the time. Anyway, they got rid of the trunks. They just didn't really like Superman. They put him in like a realistic world. But Superman's supposed to be about optimism and like hope, peace, justice, you know, the American way. Which, I mean, I guess the American way could be, like, considered, like, you know, nationalism, if you want to, like, get into that debate. But that's for another topic. And then with the Amazing Spider-Man, again, they were concerned about, like, making a, a movie franchise over, like, concerning the characters. They are just, like, Sinister Six, Aunt May spinoff, Uncle Ben gets shot, the sequel, you know, like, they just wanted to, like, throw things at the screen to make a franchise like the Avengers which of course plenty of people have been doing but you know the characters are what drive people to the comic stores so you know put that in your movie it's pretty simple we're not here to watch Spider-Man go through a series of fighting we want to you know watch Peter Parker's life unfold as Spider-Man in responsibility and guilt and justice kind of like, you know, culminate in his head and like he reflects on himself. 
We want Superman to inspire hope and justice and be a reporter, you know, things like that. We want Batman to, you know, be Batman. And have the, uh, you know, dual life. Because again, if we only cared about the heroes and the action, then there wouldn't be an alter ego. There wouldn't be, like, anything. It would just be, like, Spider-Man swinging for an hour and a half, kicking bad guys in the face. I mean, sounds fun on paper, but, I mean, you can only do so much with that. But also another thing is uh, my art teacher in high school. He's an interesting guy. We'll just say that um, we've had our differences on things, but, like, and there are things I like about him, but for the most part, he said, like, a lot of crazy things that I just don't agree with at all. And he's, like, a comic book fan, I guess. Um, he, like, has a lot of comic book artwork, but he also says, like, you know, he doesn't like comics anymore. Or he doesn't like superhero comics, and he has a classic artwork. Anyway, he's a weird guy. But he, you know, always, he's one of those people that says, like, I don't like Captain America or Superman because they're like too perfect and they're just like Boy Scouts and things. And again, that's part of the Man of Steel like mindset because, you know, like these characters are lame. They're just a bunch of lame jerkwads. Ah, they're boring. They have no problems. And again, like, it's not really a, a core understanding of the character because. Uh, I was at work one time also, and one of my coworkers asked me, like, why do you like Superman? He's super lame, and, you know, he's too, uh, powerful. I'm like, you know, it gives me something to aspire to, you know, he has hope and justice, like, if he can have all the power in the world, which granted it's been downgraded since, like, the 70s, um, if he has, like, all that power, he can shoot lasers from his eyes, and he's still does the right thing. He does what he thinks is right. Well, I mean, like, you know, why can't I do that? I have no powers. I can still make the right decision. I mean, it's the same like Captain America, you know, like, from Avengers Endgame, like, whatever it takes, that kind of mindset. Superheroes are, you know, uh, as commonly said by people better than me, like, they're the Greek myths of our time, sort of. I believe like Kevin Smith said that probably but yeah they give us something to aspire to they give us hope and peace and justice they give us a, a mindset that doesn't like you know because if we didn't have superheroes we would probably just like be crazy I mean that's probably an oversimplification I'm sure we would find something else to relate to but I mean you know we like them because they aspire we aspire to be like them um but yeah, there are stories like uh, All-Star Superman that bring out the hope and like humanity in Superman. And there's, of course, that like famous um, image of Superman with the uh, suicidal teenager that's about to like jump off. Maybe not a teenager, but she's a girl that's about to jump off. And, you know, you're stronger than you think you are. And again, with Captain America, there's another Nerd Sync video that goes into like the perfection of Captain America and how I mean sure like you can argue he was just created in the 40s to combat Nazis and he's not really much more than US propaganda sure but also like you know when Stan Lee made all his characters he invented them with human flaws all of them have crazy flaws you know uh, the thing wants to be human the human torch is a hothead. Spider-Man has money and he's a teenager. He's got all his problems. Iron Man has heart problems. The Hulk has anger issues and he tries to deal with the morality of his half, you know, monster self. And then we get to Captain America and he gets reintroduced from being uh, frozen in Avengers number four. So Stanley has to come up with something that does with the like Marvel age with his writing style the Marvel age of superheroes and how he deals with them so how do you do that well you take Bucky 
and since he's dead, you make Captain America feel guilty, and you give him guilt. Ta-da! I mean, you know, like, boom. You have guilt, you have a human that is dealing with the guilt that he killed his best friend. And again, like I said before, Captain America, even if they are, like, lame, they're there to inspire. And they give us goals to aspire to be like. That's the main thing with Batman. It's like, sure, Batman's perfect, pretty much. I mean, like, there's always the, like, I feel like it's probably died down a little bit. But there's always, like, the common joke, like, he can do anything because he's Batman. Like, he's probably overly perfect. But it gives us something to strive towards. Because all he has is money and his mind and his body. He just trains and bam, you have a superhero. Maybe not a superhero per se, but like a man with a secret identity that fights crime and betters his society with justice and, you know, strength and whatnot. So, bam, I mean, superheroes that are doing inspire us. Simple as that. Um, but yeah, that's about all I wanted to say for this video. Um, thanks for watching. Again, I do have that video. The, yeah, the video on Comics Gate coming up. Um, I'm probably not going to present the whole paper. I'm just probably going to present my ideas and my critiques, my mindset. Uh, I have a paper on my computer. Of course, I read it for, I wrote it for college. And I will present it. Um, if you would like to read it, I can post it somewhere. Um, but I have all my sources there. And I feel like that would be a nice discussion, even if com Comics Gate's a bit old. You know, it's worth a try. Because again, that was something I didn't really get into until now. Um, I had to write about like a, a dialogue, a problem like with... Like something that had a black and a white issue, kind of. So I thought, what a better what better idea to do than that. Um, 